take two. So my only camera fucking decided to shut down. Um, but then anyway, anyway <clears throat> look what came today. No, and the people perish. Yes, come today. But enough on them in a moment because I'm going to be doing Star Trek: The Official Starships Collection, issue number forty-two. Um, the USS Pasteur, NCC five eight nine two five. Um, yeah, I'm glad they've come because I've been a bit down of late, especially with this week's um, rather crushing bombshell of, of a piece of news that. You know, it's going to be the last auto assembly this year. Anyway, so my ships have come today and cheered me up a little bit. Still no vengeance. Still no vengeance and they took payment for the new Romulan uh, Klingon piece of shit, if I'm honest. Um, but anyway, on to the review itself. It's going to be Yusuf Pasteur. So we'll get quicker on. Yusuf Pasteur, NCC 58925, um, Class Olympic, constructed Marin County Fleet, uh, Starfleet Yards, type hospital ship, um, launched 24th century, destroyed 2395, length 320 metres, top speed warp 13, weaponry phasers, Captain Beverly Picard. And we get a beautiful CG render of the ship there, same one on the front cover, but no bad thing. Um, beautiful CG cover, really is nice. Um, it goes through the history of the Pasteur. Um, in the alternate future timeline, the USS Pasteur was operating in the year 2395. In this reality, the Federation and the Klingon Empire were no longer allies. There often skirmishes between the two powers, which meant medical ships were, like the Pasteur, were in much demand. And we get some nice um, screen caps from the episode of the Things. And then we get another beautiful CG render of it there. That's pretty fucking badass. Um, yeah, and then we get the tech specs, which are always always nice to see. I always like these. I like to see the top view version, but that's the underside. Um, so we get... Uh, you know, we get all various... Um, you know, basically stuff that we, we already know. There's no new information. It's just pointing out, like, deuterium, deuterium patrol, uh, def deuterium fuel, port, deflected dish, main bridge, you know, the usual. Data feed. Although it was never seen on screen, the Olympic-class hospital ship also existed in the normal timeline from the US in the form of the USS Nobel, NCC 55012. The ship fought in the Dominion War and was... And in 2374, it had reported numerous casualties to Starfleet Command. Spherical hull. Beside the Olympic class, the only other Starfleet vessels known to have spherical hull were the Daedalus class starships, in service in the latter half of the 22nd century. Uh, according to the ship's dedication plaque found on the bridge, the USS Pasteur was constructed by a Skywalker division at the Marin County Starfleet Yards in the San Francisco Bay Area on Earth. Special dispensation. In the alternate future, medical ships such as the Pasteur were along were among the few Federation vessels allowed by the Klingons to cross their border into Romulan space and treat Romulans suffering from Telerian plague. And then he goes into the season seven of Next Generation, um, explaining you know how it's got you know it's the first Star Trek series to get seven seasons. Um, it goes through various episodes, strong women. You know, um, stuff like that, the whole stretch, uh, taking risks, guest stars, end of an era, all that sort of stuff. And we had some good guest stars, guest, guest, guest stars. We have Paul Severo from uh, Goodfellas, Polly playing Warp's adopted brother, um, a stepbrother even, is that adopted brother, stepbrother, whatever, something like that. Uh, Reg Bartley makes appearance, a very young Kirsten Dunst pops up, um, Robin Curtis who played um, Savick in Star Trek 3 and 4. Pops up again, uh, Roll Arrow pop again, and um, we've got uh, Image from the Lower Decks, which is a really good episode. I'm not going to spoil it, but you should go and watch it. Um, and then we've got more images as well. Um, it was an idea that we're going to get the Eye Oceans from a piece of the action in imitating Kirk and Spock. Um, unfortunately, that never happened. Then they also recycled the idea for um, the 30th anniversary special um, episode Deep Space Nine, which ultimately came Trials and Tribulations. 
which has been cool. And then you've got Tasha Yar makes a reappearance in the series. Um, this is because in the All Good Things, there's three timelines. There's just before Encounter at Farpoint. There's present, which is season seven, and then um, the, the alternate future, which is what this ship comes from. And then we've got the last images from Deep, Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, Next Generation, where Picard joins the weekly book again. And then we see um, sort of bookends itself with uh, Picard on trial again with Q, um, saying that he never really, you know, they were always on trial. The season sevens were them always on, all seven seasons were them on trial, which is a nice bookend. It starts how it ends. It ends how it started, which is pretty cool. And there's an image of Ambassador Picard there as well. So, and it goes through all different things as well. Um, and then it goes into um, building the model um, of the past there as well, the studio model. Um, Greg built by uh, Bill George in most of his spare time. And there's a picture of it there and some uh, um, blueprints and stuff as well. Um, not much on this one actually this time around. Um, and then we get the on screen section. We get, and of course, his only appearance was all good things. Um, Designed by Bill George. And we've got some trivia. In the alternate future timeline, Picard. Uh, seen alternate. Hang on a minute. Let me see that. Right, let's start again. In the alternate future timeline, seen in all good things, Picard became an ambassador before retiring to live in France. Meanwhile, Riker became an admiral. Data was a professor at Cambridge University. Worf was a governor of the Klingon colony. Crusher was a captain of the Pasteur. Troy had died. LaForge had become a writer who was married to Lee Brahms. Uh, before having three children, Brett, Alandra and Sydney. The USS Pasteur was named in honour of Louis Pasteur. Um, 18, 1822 to 1895. The renowned French chemist who founded the science of modern bi microbiology. He also invented the process known as pasteurization and developed several vaccines. In early production of All Good Things, the USS Pasteur referred to as a Hope class after the USS Hope AH-7 World War II hospital ship. This name was, was the suggestion of Don Beck, who produced the promotional commercials for Next Generation. He later changed... It was later changed to an Olympic-class vessel because the model had already been built and named by Bill George. And then you get the underside of the hole on the back there. It's a very good magazine this week. Very good and very good, very good. And we get the rather spectacular model this time round. See now, I've noticed something. that The ships that you don't normally get, such as this one and the Grissom and stuff, have been some of the best ones. The Enterprise B was a massive letdown. This one is fucking brilliant, pardon my French. You've got love, look at all that detail on there. All those paint apps, all those windows, all those as all the, well, there's no as teching on there, but I don't think no. But there's there's um, actually a little bit. There's all these red lines. There's all there's the uh, medical symbol on the front there and on the sides, both sides. Um, there's no um, no clear plastic in the deflector dish bit there, but there's some clear plastic in the nacelles because I think you can see that. Yes, you can. Um, but look at the detail on this one. It is spectacular. Um, no, they haven't put any in the impulse engines, which is a bit of a shame. But, you know, overall, it's very good. It is amazingly accurate. It is fantastic. Um, it's nice to see. Again, this is a ship you never, ever, ever see. Um, I think Attack Wing are doing it as well. But still, it, it's just... It's it's wonderful. It, it looks exactly like, like the CG I've just done over there. Uh, the CG images that are in the magazine, it looks bloody brilliant, if I'm honest. It looks fantastic. I've got no flaws with it, except the deflector dish and the impulse engines. Uh, but other than that, that's not really... That's just nitpicking. I mean, look at the detail in the hull there. Look at all those windows and all those escape pods. You know, you've got all the um, register number on there. You've got the medical symbol and stuff. Brilliant, absolutely fantastic. The the, the detail is amazing. Uh, they could have put plastic in the strips there, but then again, if it's not an open nacelle, it's only on the inside. I'm not too fussed about that. Very good, very 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 good. Well done, well fucking done. Um, and it comes with the connector piece, 
And of course the display stand which says Ah, oh, it's fucking phone. Um anyway, yes, as I was saying, I was rudely interrupted. If you are cherry picking and you're only getting like say the Federation ships or only ships that you want, my advice would be to get this one. It is really nice looking. It looks fantastic. It really does look good. Um so that's me for this video, and I will catch you all in fluidic space. Where your galaxy's impure. Bye for now.